Good afternoon, people. Today we are going to deal with chapter one, electric charges and fields. We are going to look at some topics like electric charges, their properties, electric force between two charges, and superposition principle. So let's get going. Electric charges we see are of two types basically. Now this was due to experiments made by Thales of Greece and Benjamin Franklin also. Uh, the experiments they said that when a glass rod when an uncharged glass rod was rubbed with a uh, silk cloth an uncharged silk cloth after rubbing they both showed different properties for example two glass rods two such glass rods brought together would repel each other two such silk cloths would also repel each other so a new force of repulsion was seen between these two charges so Two glass rods rubbed with silk repel each other. Similarly, a second experiment was with plastic rods and cat's fur. So, when two plastic rods which are rubbed with cat's fur You can also call it a fur cloth. They too repel each other. But in a very significant development, it was seen that a glass rod, this glass rod, and this plastic rod, if they were brought close to each other, they attracted each other. Plastic rod, they attract each other. So, after a lot of experiments and such things, such uh, observations, uh, Benjamin Franklin, he finally gave an idea that these bodies are becoming electrified or they are becoming charged. So, due to the ideas of Benjamin Franklin, he said that there are two types of charges. But obviously you know them positive and negative. And these experiments here show that two positive charges will repel each other. So we say that like charges repel whereas unlike charges will attract each other. Now if you bring this glass rod and this silk cloth together a positive and a negative charge will mix together to make it zero. So you already know in algebra, positive plus five and minus five and take it together becomes zero. So this is what is electrostatics. You know, static charges, charges at rest and the phenomenon that they give rise to, this is dealt with in the first and the second chapter, which is electrostatics. Let's move on. Also, now it is important to understand how do these charges come into effect? Do we have these charges or do the charges get developed on their own? Let's for that matter take up the idea. We will talk about matter. You know this entire universe you know is made up of two things matter and radiation. Primarily we are concerned with matter. So matter is made up of complex particles which are called molecules which in turn are made up of smaller particles which are called atoms. You already know in chemistry and in your earlier lower standards that atoms have three primary things, protons, neutrons and electrons. Protons we know are positively charged, electrons are negatively charged and neutrons do not possess any charge. So, the right here, no charge. Also, the charge on a proton is same as the charge on an electron and together they are called E, you know, the small symbol for charge. Charge on proton, the magnitude actually, is same as charge on an electron and that is called E. The value of E is 1.6 into 10 raised to minus 19 coulomb 
So for the first time we come across the SI unit of electric charge which is Coulomb. So SI unit of electric charge is Coulomb. Let's move on. Also, you know the number of protons in an atom, the number of protons is same as the number of electrons. So number of protons is same as the number of electrons and therefore the net total positive charge is equal to the total negative charge and taken together the net charge on an atom becomes zero therefore net charge on an atom is zero and thus let me make that fundamental statement all charge all bodies in the universe do not have any net charge the net charge in all bodies is zero everybody is electrically neutral so everybody not everybody everybody in this universe is electrically neutral then the primary question that comes into being is how do bodies then get charged for example what happened when i rubbed the glass rod with the silk cloth or when i rubbed the plastic rod with cat's fur what went from here to there from one body to another the key to this is electrons you know whenever a body is rubbed against another body the electrons of that body you know the electrons reside outside the nucleus they are outside bound by very less force as compared to the force with which protons or neutrons are bound and as a result they can be easily detached from the body and they can move from one body to another and that is the reason why we say during an interaction between two bodies only electrons I'm placing a large impetus on electrons because that is going to be the most important idea you know in the days to come when we are going to calculate charge or we are going to calculate force or field electrons are going to be really important only electrons are transferred from one body to another so keep this electrons in mind so let's talk about this again you know this we will deal with in what is called methods of charging the first method as we have already seen is charging by friction you have to actually rub two things together so if I rub an uncharged glass rod with an uncharged silk cloth we saw that glass rod becomes positively charged whereas silk cloth becomes negatively charged so what happened here what went from one body to another understand this glass rod loses electrons and becomes positive whereas silk cloth gains electrons and becomes negative so glass rod loses electrons whereas silk cloth gains electrons a body which loses electrons will become positive whereas a body which gains electrons becomes negative no body can become positive by accepting protons because protons cannot be transferred from one body to another only electrons can be transferred so you lose electrons you become positive you gain electrons you become negative similarly in B we saw a plastic rod being rubbed with fur cloth so we saw that plastic rod becomes negative whereas fur cloth becomes positive can you tell me what happened here plastic rod gains electrons whereas fur cloth loses electrons so here fur cloth loses electrons and plastic rod 
gains electrons. This is the entire idea. Uh, this was charging by friction. In the next board, we will discuss charging by conduction and charging by induction. This is it.